U.S. finally a third world country? Oh my gosh, it finally happened because Americans are on the brink of bankruptcy. And this money story just keeps going from bad to worse. Is that bad? Because first is inflation, which is up in the month of August at 3.67%. Oh. And you might think to yourself, well, that's no big deal. It's just 3.67%. 3 so, yeah. But this is your like money. Month, and right? it means yeah. for every $1,000 that you make, you're really only able to buy $963 worth of goods. Back in the day... I used to go to Taco Cabana and get a bean and cheese taco combo, and it was $4. Today, I go to Taco Cabana, I get a bean and cheese taco combo, and to be fair, I also got a steak quesadilla. 15 fucking bucks. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Because that remaining $300 and change... I went to buy a drink... At the gas station, it used to be a dollar. Now, it's two dollars. And it might not seem like a lot, right? But the price fucking doubled. Just inflated away. And to make matters worse, the yeah. inflation in our economy isn't confined to just avocado toast or the occasional avocado. cup of coffee. It's actually avocado. taken root Bro, in the most. the fuck buys this shit? Get the fuck oh. Most important things that we buy every day, like gasoline and the cost of keeping a roof over your head. Gasoline prices in this country are getting out of control. And rent prices... Uh, I, I feel like... I, I, I feel like gas has gone up, but like $7? You're not seeing $7 unless you're in California, right? Like, I've been to California, it's 7 bucks over there. But like, everywhere else I've seen has been like 3 4 or $5. Like what? How much? Like if you're in the U.S., where are you, and how much is it? Four dollars in PA. It's four here. Four forty in Alaska. Well, that's. I mean, that's not really the U.S. though, right? That's Canada. Louisville, three sixty. San Francisco, five sixty nine. Damn, it must be cheap there then. Uh, deep end of Tennessee, three to three fifty. Portland, five. Chicago, four. Dallas, three twenty. Four to three sixty. Richmond, three fifty. Arizona, four eighty nine. So it's like basically California is getting fucked. Like that's really what it comes down to. Like California is getting absolutely farmed. Like I went there for the Games Expo that we did like uh, three months ago, some shit like that, right? And so I go there for the expo. And I'm getting driven around. I'm looking at these gas prices. I said, what the fuck? Like, I went to the airport. And this is an airport, right? So I go to LAX airport. I buy a bottle of water. And I buy a soda. Guess which one costs more? That's right. The bottle of water costs more. It costs $3.69. And the soda was only 3 bucks. That's right. The water costs more than the soda did. Are you aware that Austin is the epicenter of the housing downturn right now? Uh, no, I'm not aware of that. Uh, I'm not looking to buy a new house right now, and uh, I've lived in this house my whole life. I had to pay $10,000 for my property taxes this year. Or it was like last year. Like, it was nuts, man. It was a lot. ...have increased every month for the last 40 months. That's over three years of month over month, the basic cost of having a place to live has increased. But wait, it gets worse. Because Does the Federal it? Reserve, who is in charge of making sure that the economy doesn't go spiraling down the toilet drain... Oh, which, yeah. Newsflash, they're not very good at their job. They're in charge of oh. combating inflation, and they're trying to. And right now, their only option to make that happen is by raising interest rates. Which means if you still don't have a house, but you're close, if you buy one now, the cost of your mortgage is going to be higher than it's ever been compared to what well, the, the, pro the solution is just never buy a house, be homeless, uh, never have a future, don't start a family, never get married, have no goals rent a car never own one and work every day to pay off your student loans for your degree that you can't use and then eventually in six years get replaced by a robot and then you can be homeless but by that time they'll have legalized fentanyl so you can just overdose on it and die under a bridge <laughs> cost of your home is, at least if we look at the last 10 years. But thanks to inflation, in many states, the cost of the home itself is close to or at all-time highs. But wait, it gets even 
worse because the Federal Reserve recently released studies showing that household savings in the United States has been going down every month for the last two years. Because back in 2021... Well, why? Yeah, because people don't have any fucking money. And also back in 2021, you had COVID and people were able to save more money because they weren't spending money by going out and spending more money on gas because people were working from home or they had other ways of uh, saving money because they weren't going out as much. So it makes sense that like saving is down from two years ago. Like, I don't think this is actually a very strong point because of the structural changes COVID created and the economy and the culture, like defaulting back to normal. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know about this. Americans had roughly $2.1 trillion in savings collectively. And as of they July of 2023, they that number has dropped to $198 Wait, billion. wait, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Americans had roughly $2.1 trillion in savings collectively. And as of July of 2023, that number has dropped to $198 billion. And Americans... Oh, yeah, I think that we are still fucked then. Yeah. That's a lot. Wow. Americans collectively have been drawing down on their savings at a rate of around $100 billion a month, meaning by the end of September... So in two months, people are going to be out of money. Well, then it'll stop going down, right? Because you can't go into negative money, right? September 2023, that's yeah. this month. So we US only have two more months run out of savings. Then it's over. But wait... It gets worse because in October, student loans, which have been on pause since the pandemic, yeah, are scheduled again. to kick back in again. Yeah. So your money now buys you less stuff while the Federal Reserve raises interest rates against you. If you're this is why people hate capitalism and this is why people hate America. And this is why people are like fans of like communism and like even all kinds of like crazy socialism stuff. Like, you know, you have people that are fans of like uh, Stalin and shit like that. Uh, it's because things are just like in such a bad position that people just want to have some degree of uh like like freedom or like they just they're basically anything but this i think that's the way that a lot of people feel anything but this trying to buy a home while the cost of rents keep going up but i'm not i'm not saying they're right i'm just saying this is where i think the uh this is where the feeling comes from every month while at the same time student loans are coming into place so you're going to have less money in your pocket and your money doesn't go as far to begin with because of all the inflation and that's it i'm done that is the bleak state of the united states you're there's so done. much there's more to that story well, there's more it's too so much. much i can't give them more bad news they're not even they're not going to want to follow my channel if i just have nothing but depressing no, shit no, you got to tell them everything <sighs> tell them about corporate profits there's more because it would be one thing if Americans as a whole were entering into financial dark times altogether as one United States, but there that's not what's actually happening. Because in 2022 and 2023, corporate profits have been at or near all time highs. A small. Yep, there it is. It's true. Absolutely. Uh, most people don't even know what's going on. Most people don't know what's going on, but they do know what is going on isn't good. Like they don't know if they're they don't know what the solution, right? They don't know what the solution is, but they do know what the problem is. Portion of our society is doing better than they've ever done before. And I personally am all for getting rich. I want to have more money. I want you to have yeah. more money. I think we should live in a country where we all have the opportunity Everybody has to a be billion doing dollars. better tomorrow than we did yesterday, collectively. Some of us aren't gonna make it, but if we live in a place where all of us have the chance to, that's exciting. But that's not what's happening. A small group of people are getting richer, not by providing more. I, think, I do want to say, I think in the U.S. and in society now, you have more of a, quote, chance in life than I think ever before in history, as far as I know. Maybe I'm uneducated in this topic, but I do really think that you have more of a chance now than any other fucking time in history. And, and if people think that you have more of a chance at another time, when, did, when do you think you had more of a chance? No, I don't agree. When do, when do you think you had more of a chance? 1970? 1950? 1975? Well, yeah, if you're white. But if you're if you're black and it's 1953, I bet you're not having a good time. Yeah, boomer generation. Yeah, so you got to keep that in mind too. The 80s maybe? Yeah, but I, I actually... I don't agree with you having more access to success at any time frame where the internet didn't exist. Because I think that... The internet has given people so many tools and so many abilities to 
educate themselves in literally any topic that exists in the entire world. Like, for example, you can educate yourself and get a body of knowledge about astrophysics on the internet. And, th and, and this could be taught to you literally by professors at MIT in some cases. They have free resources. So, like, while yes, things are very bad and th that's, that's whatever, I do think that people do have so many opportunities nowadays and so many possibilities. Now, obviously, can things be a lot better? Yes, they absolutely can. But to say that people don't have these opportunities and people don't have these resources, I think is untrue. Everybody in this chat has that resource. That's why they're able to be in this chat. Sadly, is a cover is a bigger factor in the U.S. today than it was in the 60s. So Asmon's just playing wrong there. That is crazy to me that you say that because my dad grew up back then. And he told me what it was like in the 60s. It's not the same. Value to society, but by extracting value from it. For example, you think you're wrong because machines are taking jobs from uneducated people? You're right that machines are taking jobs from uneducated people, but the difference is that those uneducated people have the ability to be educated without the same gatekeeping mechanisms that existed in the past. Does that make sense? It's not happening though? Well, yeah, I mean, there's IQ distribution. Most people aren't going to educate themselves. That's just how it is. The truth is, like, here, here's the reality, is, uh, no, there's more gatekeeping. The gatekeeping comes afterwards. Well, the gatekeeping came afterwards then, too. There's still less gatekeeping. You need 500% more qualifications these days uh, to even be considered. 20 to 30 years ago, you didn't need 20 years of work experience to find a job. Um, I, I wasn't looking for a job 20 years ago. Uh, I I'm not really sure. And I think that most of the people that talk about what it was like looking for a job uh, 20 years ago weren't looking for a job 20 years ago. So, like, they're talking about a hypothetical from something that they heard that other people experienced and explained to them. Blackstone, a private equity firm on Wall Street, mm -hmm. led by this man, Stephen Schwarzman, who's the CEO of Blackstone. This guy took home over a quarter billion dollars in profits in 2022. Oh, Pfizer's man. CEO, Albert Borla, got a 36% pay increase in 2022 and took home $33 million. And we all know why mm -hmm. Pfizer did so well in 2021 yeah, and 2022. The fucking and if vaccine, that's not disaster capitalism, I don't know what is. Because mm -hmm. what's happening in the United States definitely feels like it's unsustainable. And it also sadly feels like the government is mm -hmm. on the side of corporations rather than the well of course it is because the corporations give them money and the people don't most of the people that vote are stupid they don't know anything about any of the policies the people are stupid they don't know any of the topics they're completely uneducated the main important things to them are like uh weird social issues that don't really affect the economy at all and they're like worried about uh y you know like whether uh transsexual athletes can compete in like sports they're worried about uh the southern border and it's like it's not like these things are not issues but it's just that the focus is completely on them yeah they're worried about pronouns and these are people that are hyper fixated on these things like one way or another and they don't know shit about budgeting they don't know shit about like how much money is being spent on different things so guess what? The corporations and these people do understand it. So none of them take the take the public seriously because the public doesn't do anything. Like whenever something bad happens, like are, are there riots? Usually no. Or are, are there do people uh, do people do something really stupid? Do they get uh, unelected next time? Usually no. So that's what happens. Yeah, people just let it happen. It's a massive problem. How much more power they have than the people? Well, the reason why they have that much power is that because the people let them have it. Like the people could vote for somebody else, but they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't vote for them. They don't hold any accountability because they're stupid. It's that simple. Remember the Pfizer CEO that took home $33 million last year? In that same year, 2022, Pfizer signed a $3.2 billion deal with the U.S. government, meaning our tax dollars are funding Pfizer and helping their company hit record profits. Allowing but this happens with a lot of companies, by the way, and it's not always a bad thing depending on what the company is doing in conjunction with the government, but sometimes it can be.
to give their CEOs massive pay boosts with money Tesla, that yeah, comes Tesla's from another US example taxpayers. Of and it's really frustrating because I wasn't a great student in school, but I seem to remember the role of government being something like regulating big businesses to protect the people from big businesses oh, I don't over know about that. stepping their bounds and doing things that are just not good for society. Right now, in 2023, it seems like government... Well, it's because people are, uh, again, people are dumb. So it's easy to convince people that it's it's like it's okay and that's it like so they're just not even going to think about it uh I, i'll say this though the nation's class consciousness is increasing each year we've seen a huge rise in the strikes and protests much more so in the last couple of decades many people are becoming more organized and understanding their class position in society well here's the problem though is that it matters less and less every year and you're seeing this with like for example the writer's strikes like, apparently, they might come to a deal eventually. But the truth is that, like, there were a lot of strikes with, like, auto unions and stuff like that, right? And guess what happened? Now the cars get made by robots. And those people are out on their ass. And that's what's going to happen. So it doesn't matter how class conscious you are whenever you don't have any collateral and any bargaining power. Unionize. Well, it doesn't matter if you unionize or not. If they can remove 90% of the employees, then they can figure out the last 10%. They're striking right now. They are. Absolutely. And every year, it becomes less effective, I think. Because every year, we get closer to those jobs being automated. We get closer to those people being irrelevant and been made redundant. That's what's going to happen is aligned with those same corporations at the expense of the American people. So the question is, what are we all going to do if things keep going this way? Is the answer stop buying the avocado toast, which is keeping us all in poverty? Or maybe we all just start collecting rainwater so we can grow our gardens off grid to sustain Actually, ourselves. Actually, that's illegal in 11 states. It's illegal to collect rainwater yeah. in 11 states? You can't do it. Are you kidding me? Not kidding. And actually, you live in one of those 11 states. <laughs> Shit. Same shit happened when McDonald's workers wanted $20 an hour. Now we have kiosks to order from. Yeah, I think that's a good question. How many of you guys go to McDonald's and you go inside and you no longer order from an individual, you order from a kiosk? Me? Yep, there it is. Sometimes, yeah. There's a lot of people. And think about how many people did that 10 years ago. And I think about how many people are going to do it 10 years from now. And how many other places are going to have that. Kiosk is better, yeah. Kiosk doesn't get my order wrong. Well, you get your order wrong, and it, you can't blame the employee, which is what sucks, right? You can't get, like, extra free food. So, yeah, I mean, that's just what's going to happen. Uh, I, I think that's what's going to happen, is uh, workers, and especially, like, unskilled workers, are going to have less and less bargaining power every single year because those jobs will become more automated now not every job will become automated that's just how it is but many of them will and it's going to be harder and harder to uh to, to have any sort of um solidarity so become the kiosk repairman yeah but becoming a kiosk repairman requires a lot more education and knowledge than becoming a uh fucking cashier that just hits the, the button that has a picture of fries on it it just does. Like, I mean, you just, the, the truth is that some people are hard capped for a lot of like jobs. Like they're just never like, there's a lot of people that are never going to be a fucking plumber. They're never going to be like a skilled uh, laborer. They're stupid or they're lazy. Like that's, that's all there is to it. They are stupid and or lazy. And it doesn't matter what happens. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. It doesn't make a difference.